Hello, I am Heather, Andre's Computer Resource. We will spend a few minutes discussing the birth of the study of implicit bias and its relationship to discrimination. Birth of the study of Implicit Bias In February 1999, four New York City police officers were on patrol in the Bronx when they saw a young black man standing on a stoop. They thought he looked suspicious. When they pulled over, he retreated into the doorway and began digging in his pocket. He kept digging as the police shouted at him to show his hands. A few seconds later, the man, Amadou Diallo, a 23-year-old immigrant from Guinea, was dead, hit by 19 of the 41 bullets that the police fired at him. What Diallo was reaching for was his wallet. He was going for his ID. As he stood on the steps of his own apartment building, Diallo's story, and the officer's fatal prejudgment of him, is an example of that gray area between deliberate violence and an accident, propagated by non-conscious, or implicit biases. IMPLICT bias It could be argued that the case of Phil Andro Catil might fall into a similar category. Mr. Castile's deadly encounter with the police occurred Wednesday night at 9 p.m., in the small city of Falcon Heights, just northwest of St. Paul. The graphic video showed Mr. Castile, who had been shot several times, slumping toward the woman who was recording the scene. As she did so, her four-year-old daughter sat in the back seat and an officer stood just outside the driver's side window, still aiming his gun at the mortally wounded man at point-blank range. The video is all the more shocking for the calm, clear narration of the woman, Diamond Reynolds, and the fact that she was streaming it live on Facebook. On the video, Ms. Reynolds, who said Mr. Castile was her boyfriend, gives her account of what happened, saying again and again that he had informed the officer that he was carrying a gun, and that he was just reaching for his driver's license and registration, as the officer had requested. When the officer opened fire, she estimated, at various times, that three, four or five shots were fired. The officers did discriminate against Diallo and it will be found if the officer in the Phil Ando Castile's killing was motivated by fear or prejudice. Was it just prejudice, bigotry or was there prejudice they acted on driven by something, more subtle than simple hatred? And that's an important thing to think about. Yes, there are lots of overtly bigoted people. And policies at work all over the world, but what we are going to discuss something more insidious, more dangerous and crippling, non-conscious, implicit bias, and how it can affect our behavior. The fact is, our implicit biases affect the way we relate to others in a very real way. The meaning or values applied to our social categories of race, gender, age, religion, or sexual orientation can make the difference between in some cases life and death. In other cases, whether we get a job or not, a fair paycheck, or a good rental, or whether we get randomly pulled over. We've all been unfairly judged at one time or another, and we have also done our fair share of prejudicial or even racialized judgments. It could be argued that prejudice, bigotry, and bias is a common human condition. Prejudice is a, a system of thoughts based on the limiting nature of the context we have grown up in, developed awareness of and accept as truth. People may distrust a female computer coder. That's a prejudicial attitude, and may be rooted in a stereotype, or overgeneralized belief about a particular group. A prejudice against female computer coders may be rooted in some inaccurate stereotype about women's knowledge of science, when stereotypical beliefs combine with prejudicial attitudes and bigoted emotions. Like fear and hostility, they can drive the behavior we call discrimination. So a prejudiced person won't necessarily act on their attitude. Say you believe in the stereotype that overweight people are lazy or immigrants are weird. You might then feel a prejudiced distaste when you see someone who appears overweight or avoid people who seem different. When one acts on prejudice, and, refuse to hire female computer coders or do not t-provide, them opportunities to advance, 
then you've crossed over into violating their civil rights and are discriminating against them. Side note, Grace Hopper most notable computer programmer in the United States. Born in New York City in 1906, Grace Hopper joined the U.S. Navy during World War II and was assigned to program the Mark I computer. She continued to work in computing after the war, leading the team that created the first computer language compiler, which led to the popular COBOL language. She resumed active naval service at the age of 60, becoming a rear admiral before retiring in 1986. Hopper died in Virginia in 1992. She coined the term, computer bug, among other commonly used terms. Back to our lesson. Subtle, implicit bias and prejudice must be examined. It is obvious, that overt prejudice is far from dead, but we must are. Recognize unexamined bias, bigotry and prejudice are just as dangerous. That's why discrimination studies are important to social psychology, educational and employment circle as we seek to reduce patterns of discrimination that show up in broad social patterns, like wage inequality, job opportunity gaps and disproportionate incarceration rates. Now, back to you, Andre, to explore these concepts further.